Hello everyone, welcome to another video. I am Elliot from Elliot's Wargaming Tutorials and today we're going to be reviewing and painting uh, Mirkwood Armoured Elves. So these are the sprues. Um, there's three of them and they're quite nice but as I was taking them out I realised there is a lot of flash on these models and a lot of mould lines and there's a lot to clean up. Sorry about the lighting, um, and um, yeah, uh, these models are the swords with shields, sorry I've got an overview camera from at the top so excuse the angle of the film, but yeah they're quite nice models, um, they're a joy to paint. And you'll see when you get to the uh, vlog part of, or hobby vlog part of the video. This is just the review part. Um, I picked these up yesterday. Um, and they're quite nice. Uh, but, as I said, there's a lot of flash on them. But some stuff that could be com improved. They are quite expensive for what they are. They're three fine cast models and five pounds each on the Games Workshop store and it's three fifteen. But if you, as long as you get a good paint drop out of them, then the price doesn't really matter. I won't miss the money. God knows how many years. Oh, it's not the money I worry about. It's just the paint job and the level of painting. Um, so you kind of got to play these guys right. Um, and these are the bases, and they're not the usual ones you get with the Lord of the Rings miniatures. Um, not the ones with the slots to put in. Um, but, you know, now that I've put them together, they're looking quite nice. Uh, I've cleaned up all the flash and basic um, mould lines. And um, hopefully I should be ready to start painting soon. But these are all the sprues that um, I snapped out the miniatures from, if that makes any sense. And this is a shield. Um, you get three of these. Um, I'm going to be making a mould of that, so, you know, I can get more shields. Um, but yeah, um, you got my castle wall in the background. But there's nice detail on the shield, and I was... I like the leaf design that Peter Jackson came up with and it's carried through to these miniatures but um, yeah, nice nice miniature I'm looking at that one now and thinking oh, didn't I do such a good job but then again there's places where you can do better but um, yeah it's just all about skill and I'm not the best at painting and sometimes I don't see my errors and they look a bit weird, I just dropped one but uh, sometimes they come out looking quite nice but yeah um, I was going to go ahead and tell you the points and that but I couldn't really tell you I don't know, I'm going to try and, I'm trying to get um some Mirkwood Palace Guard because they have the bodyguard rule and then I'll get Thranduil and then I'll clone these miniatures and make moulds of them and make sure they turn out quite nice um, but I've still got another shield to paint and wash because that one did mould and that's Haldir and that's a similar paint scheme to what I'll be doing um, oh. That's what I thought at the time, but these guys have taken a fairly different approach. It's very dark, the capes I've done. Uh, how this capes are really light. Um, I'll explain more um, when the video is up. Well, not the video, the vlog's up. Um, so here we have um, my three Mirkwood. I was going to say palace guard, but they're not. They're ar armoured elves, and they've been um, base coated in Balthazar gold, and that is the base colour for the armour. 
um, there's the paint pot. Um, but the next colour I should be doing is the hash of copper and then Gehenna's gold, which will be on the screen in a minute. But you basically mix, well, I didn't really mix those two, but you can mix those two. You get a nice blend colour, but I did went straight for that. There's Gehenna's gold. Um, yeah, so the basic three highlights you want for the Mercury Palace Guard, or I keep saying Palace Guard because um, I just mentioned it, but yeah, here's the red, um, and then you mix it with black, and then you get this really dark red colour, kind of like scab red, and maybe mine went a bit too dark, but from a distance they look alright, they kind of look like their capes are on fire, but... <laughs> And then, then there's Scarlet um, to use as well. Um, maybe like my little background display. Then this is the elf skin. Um, desert yellow and bone white. Um, yeah, they make a really good elf skin. Um, as long as you mix them properly. And then you get um, the elf hair. Tan flesh and desert yellow. So, yeah. Then we wash the shields in Agrax Earth Shade, and that's about it, really. Um, so now that I've gone ahead and done the capes, and they look quite nice, um, so they used flat red and um, black. Um, it's quite nice. Um, and the colour you can see there is quite dark red. Um, but just looking at them now, there's a real difference. That's really cool. Um, next, I'll be doing the, I think, pauldron or the face. Um, and I'll see what I'm doing. Um, but these models are starting to look really nice. Um, and if you can see at the background, I'm following the box example, and then I just kind of go off on my own. But yeah, the next put one's the pauldron, and that's a brown. So stay tuned. Um, then we're going to do the face. There's the pauldron done, um, and now we're going to be moving on to the face. Um, yeah. Uh, the models are increasing in, what's the word, awesomeness, <laughs> uh, if you know what I mean. Um, and just a quick mention, uh, the guys that got me into these Merkwood um, Army is the GBHL podcast. Um, you know, GBHL Damien uh, gave me inspiration for this project um, and uh, got me into the Warhammer Lord of the Rings style thing, and the other one is the OHA SBG, which is the Onotario Hobbit Adventure, I think that's how you say it, um, don't kill me if I said it wrong, but yeah, I've done the hair now, and the face, and it looks quite nice, um, and the capes look quite nice as well, but um, I did highlight the cape. I don't know whether I should have, but because I think they look quite nice there, but um, I think they look quite nice now as well. Um, I get stuck on highlighting because uh, I'm what you might call kind of a beginner, but I don't really know how to highlight um, too good, um, if that's even a word. But <laughs> yeah, uh, hopefully you are enjoying this, and I probably still have to do that silver, although I might leave it. Um, I know I did it on the shield, which I'm looking at right now, but, um, yeah, uh, I don't know, uh, stay tuned and I think I'm going to do a highlight on the gold of the cape, okay, see you in a second. Okay, so I think... I don't know what I did. I think I did a highlight on the cape here. You may not see it, but it's a very faint highlight. I don't even think I highlighted it. I think I just did the same colour. <laughs> um, I just didn't realise. 
So I just painted the same colour on twice, so technically that was double coating it in the same thing, which made the paint coat stronger, but not exactly the colour scheme I was looking for. But yeah, I started doing the shield now, which is quite good. Um, yeah, not too bad. Judging by the fact I've been painting for nearly seven hours and it took me an hour and a half to clean up the models. Um, but yeah. Um, I think they're looking increasingly nice now that I've done the uh, blades as well. I forgot to mention that earlier. Um, or they give me your feedback. Are these guys looking good? Are they looking bad? If not, I'll adjust them. But I uh, might need to clean up the pauldrons a bit. Because I'm not 100% impressed with them. Um, they're looking okay. I might put them back to just basic brown. Although I'll see what you guys think on Instagram. Um, and on Facebook. If you guys follow me on that, it's Alex Wargaming Tutorials. Um, and I've got five four or five posts um i think four but there's one which is six but as you can see i think i've highlighted the hair basically i just did the um uh, desert yellow and the um tanned flesh sorry i'm saying i'm a lot uh <laughs> then i highlighted it with the desert yellow um which gave it that nice um kind of realistic feel um, I haven't washed the hair yet I probably should and I'll wash the face but that's when I'll have a hair dryer on me so uh, did a little work um, but these models look really really nice um, and you'll see I'll put a picture up on the end this is just me kind of messing about a bit you know that famous scene from The Hobbit where the elves are all lined up and the dwarves are getting ready to take a hit from the enemy and the elves are lined up waiting for something to happen to the dwarves so they win and the dwarves will lose and the elves just like run along and uh, I think you'll see now and they just jump over and then start slicing up and the elves, elves? <laughs> well, they were elves, but they got turned into orcs, but that didn't work. <laughs> it just belly flopped. Um, but yeah, I just can move them. And I know you people are saying uh, in the comments, oh, yeah, yeah, those aren't dwarves, they're Numenorean knights from the last alliance box. And I'm like, yeah, I know. But I don't have any dwarves, so they had to do. Because the elves are taller than the men, so um, it made sense, you know. <laughs> I'm definitely going to be collecting more. And there's the mould um, that I made. Uh, truth is, I lost one of the shields down some decking. And I can't find it, so yeah. I'm not going to rip up the decking, so I'm just going to make a mould. <laughs> I think I highlighted the capes here. Yeah, I did. Um, there's a lot of highlights that are going on, and it's not the highlights. Um, what I tend to do is work from the inside out. Well, no, from the outside in, rather, because that's the best way to work. And you start with the capes, and you work your way into the inside chest, or and the plate mail. I may need to highlight each individual plate mail after I give it a wash, but these guys are looking quite nice. But yeah, in the conclusion, I recommend this box. Um, just don't lose the shields. <laughs> um, make sure you like, comment and subscribe for more content like this. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.